The movie opens in a town called Red Crow in Canada, which is home to many indigenous people. We then see a native old man named Jissy Goo, who has successfully caught several fish. He meticulously removes their intestines and begins to clean them. However, the old man is taken aback when he notices the gutted fish moving and jumping around. They eventually return to the water and begin to swim. In the next scene, we see another indigenous man named Trailer, who is the local sheriff. He responds to a call about a dying dog that belongs to his ex-wife. Joss. When he arrives, he notices that the dog has eaten something poisonous and is in severe pain. Trailer tries his best to save it, but in the end, he's left with no choice but to put it down. After this, he enters the house to meet Joss, who is a nurse by profession. She informs him that their son Joseph has been arrested in another town. He is accompanied by his half-brother Lysol, <laughs> whom Trailer fathered with another woman. Her name was Clorox. Joss then asks him to go to the station and release his sons right away. However, However, Trailer says that he will go later because he wants the boys to suffer for a while. Following this, Trailer places the dead dog in his car trunk and drives to see his father, who turns out to be Gissy Goo. The old man shows him the fish, which are still alive despite having their organs removed. He says he has never seen anything like it and is scared shitless. Following the conversation, they bring the fish outside and begin to burn them. Trailer then opens his car trunk, but during this, the dead dog shockingly comes to life and proceeds to attack him. This scares Trailer so badly that he immediately shoots the dog again. He then burns it as well, but notices that the fish are still moving, despite being on fire. The scene then shifts to a prison cell, where we see Joseph and Lysol. They notice another inmate approaching them while vomiting blood, which disgusts them. Sometime later, Trailer and Joss arrive at the station. They learn that the boys were arrested for climbing a bridge and defecating on drivers below. <laughs> Okay, boys, you're staying here. When they arrive at the cell, the sick inmate gets violent and begins attacking the boys. He bites Joseph on the arm before a cop beats him down with a flashlight and knocks him out. Later, while heading to the hospital, Joss scolds her son for always creating trouble and not making better choices. She also doesn't like him hanging out with Lysol, especially when they're hanging their asses out over the bridge. Joseph responds that his brother has gone through a lot since his mother died, and Trailer has basically abandoned him. However, he promises his mother not to act recklessly from now on. Soon after, Joseph arrives at the hospital, where he meets his pregnant girlfriend, Charlie. She's there for an abortion, but Joseph pleads with her to keep the baby. He assures her that he will take care of her, and Charlie eventually changes her mind. Meanwhile, Joss is looking for tetanus shots, but her colleague informs her that they have run out. It turns out a large number of people have come in with bite cases in the last 24 hours. At this moment, a white nurse goes crazy and begins biting people around the hospital. It all. <laughs> white women, am I right? <laughs> Later that night, Trailer responds to a call from an indigenous man named Shooker. This man reveals that his white girlfriend is acting strangely and is trying to attack him. When Trailer arrives at the house, he is horrified to see the woman biting her newborn child. He tries to stop her, but the woman becomes aggressive and bites him instead. However, Trailer manages to overpower her and repeatedly hits her in the head with the shotgun until she dies. Following this, as Trailer and Shooker get in the car, he receives a call from Josh. She anxiously reveals that a nurse attempted to bite her, and there's chaos in the hospital. Trailer then drives towards the hospital, and on the way, he comes across an ambulance. It turns out that Joss, Joseph, and Charlie were able to escape in the ambulance, but are still being pursued by the dead people. After killing a few more of them and burning their bodies, they finally realize that they are dealing with a zombie pandemic. Six months later, the outbreak of flesh-eating zombies has spread, and the Red Crow has been turned into a fortified compound. The residents have discovered that native indigenous people are immune to the bite, whereas white refugees are not. This is the reason Trailer and Joseph survived despite being bitten by the zombies. Meanwhile, Lysol has grown increasingly hostile towards others' tendency to bring in white outsiders. One day, Joseph brings a man seeking help for his sick daughter. Lysol becomes agitated and reprimands his brother for bringing white people into their camp. He wants to wipe the whiteies out and keep things clean. He then decides to shoot both the father and the daughter but Joseph and Charlie try to stop him. This leads to a heated argument between them, and Lysol even points his gun at Charlie's pregnant belly. But before he can pull the trigger, Trailer intervenes and stops their fight. He then examines the little girl and finds out that she's been bitten. He informs the father that his daughter is no longer alive, and that he has to kill her. Trailer then sends the reluctant dad inside the camp and finishes off the girl with a heavy heart. In another scene, a young white woman named Lilith arrives at the camp, and Joss interrogates her. She 
inquires if she has eaten any people or dogs, but the young woman denies this. When asked if she has been bitten, Lilith responds that she hasn't. However, we find out it's a lie when she goes to the bathroom and checks a bite wound on her stomach. Meanwhile, the little girl's father shoots himself in the bathroom and quickly transforms into a zombie. Lilith notices him from her stall, but doesn't mention it to anyone. Elsewhere, Trailer and his crew are planning their next steps for survival. The crew includes his father, Geesey Goo, Shooker, and another man named Bumper. The issue is that there are too many zombies, and their ammunition is running low. They are currently managing zombies at the bridge with a shredding truck, but their main priority is to make it through the winter. While they are discussing this, they are informed about the death of the girl's father, so Trailer goes to deal with the situation. Meanwhile, we see Charlie having a serious conversation with Joseph. She feels like the baby is eating her from the inside out, but because she's white, she is concerned about what will happen if their baby is not immune. But Joseph assures her that this will not happen and kisses her. On the other hand, Joss checks on Trailer, who has been bitten by another zombie. She removes his shirt and notices that his back is covered in bite marks. She then sews his wound and informs him that there's no anesthesia and that he will have to bear the pain. Trailer doesn't mind and thanks her for everything, leading them to share a sweet moment. Later that night, Lysol takes some narcotics and drinks alcohol. With a name like his, I'm surprised he didn't huff paint too. In his inebriated state, he goes to Joseph and apologizes for the earlier incident. He also expresses his guilt for always causing trouble in the family. Joseph understands his situation and promptly forgives him. After all, they are family. Following this touching moment, Lysol notices Lilith in the distance and decides to go flirt with her. After chatting for a while, he takes her into a room to have some fun with her. But to his horror, Lilith unexpectedly transforms into a zombie and starts chowing down on his nuts. This causes Lysol to scream in pain, drawing the attention of other people. Joseph quickly arrives to check on his brother and is appalled to see him being eaten alive. On the other hand, Trailer sets out to gather supplies with his crew. They soon arrive at a gas station where they are casually attacked by many zombies, but the group manages to quickly decapitate them one by one. Back at the camp, Joseph ties Lilith's hands and places a sack over her head. He then brings his injured brother to see his mother, but Lysol suddenly stabs him. When asked why he did this, Lysol responds that he has no family. Thankfully, Joseph doesn't suffer any fatal injuries and manages to escape his maniac brother. In the aftermath of this incident, Lysol frees Lilith, who proceeds to attack the camp members. This results in many people becoming infected, ensuing absolute chaos. Shortly after, Trailer and his crew return to the camp, only to find it in disarray. He quickly contacts Joss via walkie-talkie and discovers that Joss, Joseph, Charlie, and eight other survivors are trapped in the compound's basement. With time running out, Trailer uses the car's music to attract a horde of zombies. Taking advantage of the distraction, he and his crew enter inside to rescue the survivors. Not long after, they discover the family and some other survivors. They attempt to lead them to safety, but some zombies arrive at the scene, forcing Trailer to use his gun for defense. This unfortunately turns out to be a big mistake, as the gunshots attract even more zombies. With no other option, Trailer orders his family to leave while he deals with the dead. He continues to fight them off until they overpower him and eat him alive. The sight devastates his family, but they are soon escorted to the truck by Gissy Goo and Bumper. While driving, Gissy Goo receives a radio call informing him that Lysol has trapped several other survivors inside the church. He asks Joss and Charlie to go somewhere safe with Bumper, while he and Joseph deal with his grandson. When they arrive at the church, Lysol is nowhere to be found, but his two accomplices are terrorizing the place. The old man demands to know where Lysol is but his accomplices refuse to answer. Gissy Goo and Joseph quickly eliminate these two and rescue a group of people. The scene then shifts to the morning, where Bumper is guarding Joseph and Charlie near a lake. They spot a boat in the distance and plan to leave as soon as Joseph and Gissy Goo arrive. Moments later, Lysol appears out of nowhere and stabs Bumper, injuring him severely. We learn that his true plan was to distract the men so he could murder Charlie and her baby. Lysol then approaches Charlie to finish her off, but Joss points a gun at him. She eventually shoots him, but not before Lysol unleashes a group of zombies from the trunk of his car. Following this, the zombies approach Charlie and begin attacking her. Joseph arrives moments later and kills them all, but he discovers that Charlie has already been bitten. A distraught Joseph then stabs his half-brother and leaves him to die. As the survivors walk a bit further, devastated to see the only remaining boat burning in flames, this shatters their hope to live, and they are now ready to give up on their lives. But to their luck, Shooker arrives at the scene with two other boats. The survivors happily proceed towards it, but then a horde of zombies approaches them.
them as well. Seeing this, Gisigu declares that he will stay behind to fight them off. Joseph tries his best to stop him, but the old man forces him to flee with Joss and his wife. After this, Gisigu bravely fights the zombies and eventually ends up decapitating each one of them. Meanwhile, on the boat, Charlie begins to have contractions, so Joss helps her with childbirth. After a lot of struggle, she finally gives birth to a baby girl. Joseph quickly checks it and confirms that the infant is not infected, which makes Charlie very happy. However, she knows that she's infected and can't stay alive much longer. She then begs Joseph to kill her before she turns into a zombie and hurts them. In the end, Joseph reluctantly shoots his girlfriend and stands by her body while Joss holds the newborn and contemplates their future. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.